Hey friends, thanks for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the D25J series. Today I have the head prepped, all the gaskets, all the parts are cleaned, ready to install. Finally got some great weather and I have some time to work on this thing. We had a couple big storms come through here in Northern California, so it's been raining for weeks, so I have a couple days and then it's going to start raining again, supposedly, so <laughs> we'll see if I can knock this thing out. I had to run the to town to get some fuel and some more brake cleaner, so I'm kind of behind today, but I think I'll be able to knock it out. So if you want to know what happened, just tune into the previous series and you'll see where I tore it apart, but long story short, this engine had a lot of water in it. And I found the corporate, so we got that fixed, and everything's prepped, ready to go. The only gasket I couldn't source was the one that goes from the pony motor water jacket to the main head. When I tore this one apart, it was still stuck on there, and it looks like it's still in pretty good shape. And it looks like it's a solid little chunk of rubber, so I'm hoping I can reuse it, because I called Cat, and it was like almost 110 bucks just for that gasket, and it's like... Just a little square gasket with a little thumb tab so you can slide it in there. So I'm hoping I can reuse that one. I also found one at uh, agkits.com. They're in San Jose. But I ordered some gaskets from them like two weeks ago. And they were really cheap. So I was like, hmm, it's just going to work out. Uh, almost two weeks later, haven't received an invoice or anything. So I'm like... I might just have to cancel that and uh, I ended up making the gaskets that I needed uh, in the video before this. I have my backhoe down here and I have a chain hoist. I'm going to use that to slowly lower the head down. I don't want to mess up that gasket and I really want to be careful when I lower this head down. So I don't have a crane or any kind of attachment right now for doing mechanic work. So all I have is the backhoe, so we're going to use that to carefully lower the head down, and hopefully that'll work out. Alright, let's get into it. Hey, no rust. Starting to warm up. <laughs> Gotta love these gloves. Oh, I took the thumb off and I'm using this pin here for, from the thumb to hold that thing so I can some, have some kind of control. I don't know if uh, you guys are familiar with stick control backhoes, but my dad told me that the only thing worse than uh, Massey Ferguson stick controls is. The old Ford stick controls, I guess they're a little worse than the Massey Ferguson's. It's really hard to lower this boom down really slow. You just hardly have to touch the levers. And I think part of it has to do with uh, that thing probably needs rebuilt. It's got almost 5,000 hours on it, on the where uh, all the seals and the levers go in, down into that. Um, so it's kind of hard to move them. So I'm just going to put it about a foot too high and then slowly lower it down with this chain hoist. That way I can get that seal butted up. That seal on the pony motor, right there, that's 110 bucks. So I'm gonna try to reuse that one.
Okay, so I like how that seal on the pony motor lined up. I'm going to try to slide the head back so it puts some pressure on that seal before we start putting pressure on these head bolts. These on the machine surface down. So I need to use torque this until I hear it click. Hold that for a second. I'm going to push the head over so it'll put some pressure on that seal. Okay. Okay. There you go. I bent this one, I put the head on an accident. So, take this off, hopefully I can salvage it. For some reason this wrench doesn't want to go on. The compressor wrench is better for this. I don't know what's going on with that wrench. Too much paint, I guess. Okay. See, I bent this down. I think I can salvage that. Two. So I got it bent. Hopefully I didn't kink it. I'm gonna get both sides on pretty, pretty good, and then it's uh, rubbing on this decompression. Oh, let's well see if it leaks, huh?
we'll make sure this thing's getting oiled before I run it. So you want to keep all these loose so you can hook up this linkage here for the oil pump. Push rods are still intact. this one in. I have the windows just a tad so to get them out. Oops. So we'll get the one in the back. Okay, those are all snugged. We got all the oil lines snugged.
the push rods. Are still in position. Okay. We are making some gaskets before I slap that head on the D25J caterpillar. So I ordered, I got all the gaskets I could get at Cat, and then I ordered some from, uh, I believe it was an ag kit from San Jose. But it's been almost two weeks, and they haven't sent me a tracking number. And we finally have some sun, so I don't know what they did with the parts, but I'm just going to make them because I can't be waiting have my uh, machine get rained on for any longer with that head ripped off. So, so I bought this stuff off Amazon. doesn't really have any specs. AYMK228 seems thick enough. We're pretty close to the original gaskets. Um, had good reviews on Amazon, so it's just some, you know, more Chinese stuff taking over the market. But, um, yeah, I can't, if I get any of this stuff on my local parts store, it's just, the pricing here is just through the roof. You cannot afford anything um, unless you really, really need it, but it's really just not worth it. Um with today's economy but off this ordering stuff and waiting i i tried to uh support the local stores um i used to that's all i did i never went to amazon for a long long time but but now with the economy and everything's just so expensive i've been resorting back to amazon so um i haven't made gaskets in quite a while I used to make them when I was a kid, when I was working on small engines. And see, that's that one we have. Usually when I was a kid, we would just put grease on there and put on the gasket, but I noticed it was always leaking. So um, I was told you're not supposed to do that. So I'm gonna try to do this without grease today. These are pretty simple gaskets. So we have that one. So uh, we have this unit. I believe this one. Uh, they're both open. I can remember. Okay, so this one goes right here. So I have to make. Let's start off with an easy one. So we're going to make this one. So that should probably work. I put a brand new blade on here so it's nice and sharp. I'm going to trace the outside first. Probably put those holes in first. But let's see if this works. Yeah, let's see if that works.
Hey, we got a hole, and I just ordered this punch kit off Amazon. Lang tool. So let's see if it works. What is that? Like a half inch? Like a half inch. <laughs> it says half inch USA. <laughs> and then the front says Ling Tools. Shoot, maybe it is made in America. You think Lang was uh not American? Interesting. Yeah, these gaskets are made in the USA, so maybe this is made in the USA. Sweet. <sighs> I don't want to go in there. There we go. Okay, so we will punch these out real quick. Gasket to split. We have to get the big hammer for this. <laughs> Ridiculous. You got that hole in there? Nope. I broke it. Well, that sucks. And that's why you do the holes first. <laughs> okay. I'm actually going to use this material since it's made in America. I guarantee it's going to work a lot better. Yeah, I can kind of see those holes. So now we're going to punch this out. Probably need a hard piece of wood for this. This plywood is not quite doing it. But yeah, this gas can show us seems a little better. Pretty sure that other one will work if I had a harder surface because it sunk so far into the wood it just popped it apart. Okay, so we should have the holes. You see, I don't have any nuts for these bolts. These are too small. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline it with the pan. That's Usually what I do if I don't have any bolts. So let's line up these holes here. Tricks it. Oh. One more pin won't reach. Should be close enough though. Okay, we'll just cut this out. Leave a little bit of excess. We can cut that off later.
get that. Looks pretty good. I actually should have punched this out before I did anything else. Guess you live and you learn, huh? Normally, you could just pop it all the way out, but this is all rusted out and there's no cutting edge. So now I'll just trace this with the blade. Um, a little more right here. I don't want to restrict the water flow at all, so. I'm gonna take a little more off right there because it's gonna restrict the flow just a tad. Even though this goes to the injection pump, I don't it matters too much. Let's do it right since it's a caterpillar. I normally just buy my gaskets, to be honest. But I was watching a Sasquatch pump these things out. He's pretty quick at it, so it's not that hard. So I might as well get back into it since I'm not going to be able to get most of the gaskets for these old tractors that I've been working on. Okay, that's not going to restrict the flow. We got this one made. And we have that one. So now we just have to make this one, this one, and this one. Oh, they sent me was two. This went too far with that one. I think I messed this one up just a tad. Should still work though. Yeah, that'll work. There's still plenty of ceiling mating service right there. See, we got all this area and up here. Well, it's not ideal, but it'll work. It should work. On the bottom, we're not restricting that flow. So we're not restricting the flow. Still gonna seal. Try all the holes all lined up.
Okay, that should work. Messed up on the holes just a tad, but it'll work fine. Got like three eighths of an inch cover distance right there, and we have the little quarter inch over here. Not ideal, so it's got to be careful it doesn't move when you're punching those holes, otherwise, you'll end up with stuff like that. Let's see, I wonder if this side would be better. No, it doesn't matter. And that gasket went right here too, so okay, we got two of them made. You don't want to get too close to the edge because yeah, it'll bust when you're popping those. Jesus. That's pretty close. Okay, all those holes line up now. If I had a big enough punch, that'd be nice. I'll just do it with this. Let's cut out the outside line. Double check that before we go to the next step. I think that'll work. You can do this when the gasket's on the machine as well. But my hands are gonna, I'm gonna be pretty dirty once I get down there. So I'm just trying to knock all this fine tuning stuff out. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. That's
that's what you missed. Um, you really got to make sure that bolt right there to the left, those two bolts to the left, you got to get those in first and don't snug them all the way down. Get those two bottom ones in and then you can snug those two down. <laughs> it's like a pinch stick almost. Okay, friends, I've been at it pretty hard over 12 hours today, so almost got there. I'm going to get some gas tomorrow. There's some sticky stuff in there. This thing has a bunch of holes and they were all most of them were plugged up so hopefully it'll breathe a little better still some stuff in there but i need i need to get some gas that'll take it right off and then we'll get this serviced i need to research how much oil this thing needs uh, i've never uh, done this before so i'm gonna figure that out when i get home so we still need to put the intake on we got that exhaust hooked up with the gasket and I need some time for this gasket sealant on the pony to dry so hopefully that won't leak because I had to reuse that seal because it was 110 bucks so and then yeah we got the injection lines hooked up I still got to hook up the return lines um, we'll do that tomorrow and I'm gonna put the valve cover gasket on just uh, sit it on there so water doesn't get in there but yeah, everything's looking pretty good. I still have to flush the engine. The engine has diesel in it. Well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, it's still got a bunch of diesel in there. So I gotta flush out that. And we're gonna, if I do get this thing running, it's gonna take me a couple days to get this radiator system flushed the block and the head had a lot of rust in it uh, I still got to hook that up. That's for the temperature sensor. I'll do that tomorrow though, but yeah uh, Everything looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with how everything went these little d2s are so easy to work on Compared to my Massey Ferguson backhoe. It's like it's two different worlds. Really appreciate everybody for tuning in